Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. Uh, we're right at the workbench again, ready to do another project here, uh, right for the end of the year, perfect timing. Uh, it's uh, getting pretty cold out, so I figured it'd be a good time to bring this project out. Uh, and it is the Runaway Train movie locomotives. As you guys know, I built three originally. Uh, I, I modeled the first three engines, uh, but it's time to do the lead engine, which is the most interesting out of all of them. It's the one that takes the damage to the front uh, with, after it hit a caboose. It's covered in snow, so it's a bit of a different modeling project. It's not something uh, you guys are probably used to seeing modeled either. You know, For me, I usually do modern stuff where I'm doing modern freight cars and engines, just weathering them. So it's a bit of a different project here, and I definitely want to try to get as many clips of this thing as I can to kind of show you guys how I'm going to go about modeling something like this. Um, it's a bit of a different project, too, because we're not being able to use regular prototype photos like I usually do. We actually got to use movie reference to model it. So it's a bit of a different way of doing things too. Uh, there are some photos we can use, but not too many. I'll try to point it out as we go here. Uh, but real quick, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring up the uh, models that I was working on. So as you guys know, I have the uh, F7A the two GP7s, those are all completed. Um, I did some work to those to get those up to date. Um, and I'll talk about that real quick here, uh, just to kind of get these back in and get them. So kind of quickly here, I'll brush over these engines. Um, I'm looking at the GP7s right now. Uh, not much has changed since you guys last saw these, um, but there are some prototypical differences that I made of these that I originally uh, hadn't been able to model before, or have just kind of recently finished. Um, I didn't have the MU cables on these units before because I was planning on trying to make the MU cables and air hoses connectable between the engines, but I just found with the snow effects and everything else, it'd just be too hard. And the only other option would be to use those uh, magnetic airlines. Uh, and even those, they're just too complicated, they're kind of expensive, and it's just too much work that it's almost not worth it uh, for this project. So I just decided to put uh, regular MU cables and um, the air hoses on these. Um, but once I did that, I was able to kind of wrap up the snow effects, which is the plus side. You can see I finally got the snow actually finished on it, so I got the baking soda snow all over the pilot there. It's just kind of crusted up all over. Looks really good. And then I basically finished the snow effects on the model entirely, uh, so I just went and put the final little bits of snow and highlight effects with the dry brushing and everything. So it's all down the sill. Um, on the cab roof and everything on the nose, you guys can see all the snow effects are pretty much finished at this point. You guys can see the nice buildup of snow around the fans and everything. You can see how detailed that is. And the same thing around the hatch on the back here. Snow effects are finished. Uh, I got the correct M3 horns on these now. Um, right from the get-go, I knew I couldn't model 100% accurate AAR or ARR Alaska Rail GP7s because there's just too many differences between. Uh, a very Americanized GP7. Uh, Alaska Railroad has a lot of interesting uh, details on their units. They're from um, the US Army and they were bought by Alaska Railroad so they came with a lot of unique features. For one they had these Alco Type B trucks which is the major change that I had to put on this and they all had load noses. As you know in the movie they all had the chop, uh, the chop noses but they added new noses with plywood. Um, so that was just kind of, there's just things like that that are different about them. But the biggest thing I had to do was change the trucks out. Um, and this is a big thing, at least I could get it close and it made it look a lot better was to change the trucks out. I couldn't find the parts originally from Proto 2000 since they've been out for a while. But I was able to get a hold of some uh, parts uh, thanks to a friend, he loaned them to me. And I got them and I had to do some modifications to the chassis of the engine and the truck frame itself to get it to fit right because it is slightly longer than a standard Blomberg Type B truck. Um, but I got them to fit just fine. Once I did that, I put the snow effects on them, I put the rotating bearing caps on them, and then I, again, just finished the snow effects on the unit. So you guys can see the trail unit's done here, it looks really good. And then it's the same story on the second GP7. They're pretty much identical. There are some minor differences, obviously they're not 100% the same, but they're, they're close. So the GP7s, again, they're, they're pretty much done at this point. I'm ready to set those aside, call it good on them. I'm going to put it back together here. Now the F7, real quick, if we look at it, um, again, not much has really changed since you guys last saw this engine, other than the biggest modification, which was to change the fuel tank and remove the sill on the side because the Alaska Railroad units don't have that sill. 
Um, so I had to change that around and basically I had to kit bash the fuel tank on this engine and put the battery box doors in front of it and everything and then put the special access port there for the uh, uh, fuel gauge and everything. It's not 100% accurate but I got it close. And then I just basically finished the detailing on the trucks like the air, uh, the sanding cables and everything and then the speed recorder so the truck frames have been completely redetailed. I basically finished the snow effects on the engine again. Uh, with a lot of dry brushing effects. I actually put the snow on the cab or on the beacon on the front there and I basically finished the snow effects on the plow as well and then I finished the MU cables, air hoses and everything else on the ends but again not that too much has really changed with this engine uh, it's a pretty good stand-in model for 1500 it'll work so that's such, like I said pretty much the engines where we left them off they all had their own subtle little changes since you guys last saw them. But other than that, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Like I said, I'm kind of bummed about the GP7s. Again, there's just some things I, I can't really change on them at this point. Like the grills are different on the uh, real engines. The grills are a single grill, not a double grill. I think the fans are different. There's just a number of little changes I'm just not going to do. Um, now the question is, if I were to do this again, would I do it differently? Uh, yeah, I'd probably kit bash my own Proto 2000 or Atherin GP7s and try to get them even closer. But at this point, they're done. I'm not going to try to even touch these again. I've put way too much effort into them at this point, so they're good as they are. So we're looking at the GP40 here now, and this is obviously going to be the star of this video series for the next couple weeks or months, whatever it takes. Uh, and we're going to be working on this guy. This is the newest release from Atherin. I debated using an Atlas GP40-2 because they offered uh, the uh, paint schemes on their GP40s that were actually relatively accurate, but I ended up getting the Atherin engine because it was a little cheaper. Um, it's not 100% accurate, but it has the basic details like the late grills, the correct Lombard uh, Type B trucks, and the short fuel tank that it's it's close enough. The Alaska Road units also have an anti-climber on the front end. Atherin didn't model that. Um, but again, I'm going to be putting the damage on there. You're not even going to see it, so it's not worth uh, fussing around about too much. Uh, I was nice. I was glad to see that Athen kind of upgraded these two. They have a better, um, better can motor. They have a new lighting board, so it's easier to install a DCC into them, which I've done in this model already. It's pretty much packed and ready to go, uh, and it's just a little bit better. It has bulbs too. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be using them on this model because, as you know, the prototype never had lights on. So whatever. Anyway, there's some basic details I'll have to do, but it's actually pretty minimal. It's just a matter of adding cables, uh, some new fuel tank details and stuff, as you'll see. But uh, it's a pretty good model out of the box, but this is going to be our starting point for the project, is the Alaska Rio 3010. Um, so I'll be using this for the whole project. So fortunately there are some prototype photos of the 3010 about the time the movie was made. Uh, they give you guys a basic idea of what it looked like. Um, and where most of the details were on the engine to model it relatively accurately. Uh, again, you can also watch the movie. Uh, there's a couple scenes where they show the lead engine relatively well. Uh, the shots are a bit grainy, but you can still make out certain details, like I know where the horn is on the model from watching the movie, and I know where certain other details are from watching the movie. Uh, of course, it's obvious you can see the beacon we're going to have to add. It has a winterization hatch, um, and I know where all the fuel tank details are. I couldn't get them on the... Uh, photos of the engine, how it looked in the movie with the damage because it has all the fake snow effects and everything so it's kind of covering the fuel tank so I can act actually accurately model the fuel tank details on this model uh, by using the prototype photos of how it looked uh, like these photos here you guys can see all these uh, they're really helpful for uh, getting all the snow, or not the snow, but the uh, fuel tank details right so I'm going to be using prototype photos and movie reference to model this engine basically um, as we look at the model, the first thing I'm going to actually have to do here is I'm going to have the cab opened up here for a little bit. I'm going to add a basically a cab interior, and I'm thinking about modeling some of the damage on the interior just to kind of knock that out of the way. Also to kind of keep it separate for painting later. Uh, the biggest thing I'm going to have to do to this though, uh, first off, is strip the shell down um, and kind of clean it up a little bit and uh, before I add the details to it and then I'll repaint the whole thing um, I'm not gonna strip it because just like in the movie they basically took acrylic paint and painted over all the markings so it's actually kinda prototypical they didn't really strip the thing it wasn't completely technically a repaint it was just paint painted over the Alaska Rio so it's kinda prototypical doing it this way anyway so that's how I'm going to do it but I'm gonna start with the cab 
I'm going to do some detailing in there. Uh, so in the next clip, I'll show you guys some uh, details. So like always, the first stage of the um, process of building this engine, or any engine, is disassembly. And I've gone and looked at the photos that I showed just a second ago, and I know what I need to take off. A lot of this I already kind of knew anyway, but the big things that we're going to have to do are take the footboards off the pilots, because those are not there on the real engine. Um, I'm going to do some basic detailing to the fuel tank. One of the things I'm going to have to do is cut all these molded notches off the metal tank and replace those with uh, separate parts. It'll look a lot better. Um, I don't know if I'll show that or not yet, but it's just basically taking a Dremel and grinding these off. Um, but I'll probably won't show that. I've also taken the handrails off, another thing, uh, just so they don't get damaged in this process. Um, I've gone ahead and started adding some basic cab details, like the control stand and stuff, since that's pretty visible in the cab and the movie locomotive. And I've also added some of the damage to the interior of the cab, and that's just made from styrene, bits of wire, and stuff like that, to get the illusion that there's all that debris inside the cab, like in the movie. You guys can see that. It looks pretty cool. It looks pretty convincing, just like the real cab of the engine in the real movie. Um, so the next stage here, um, once all this glue dries, I'll set aside the cab for a little bit, patch up some holes, and then we're going to get ready to start detailing the shell, and I'm going to start... So it's worth noting that while I'm doing the cutting process for the chassis to remove these uh, cast-on nubs for fuel tank details, I'm going to be removing this radiator fan here on the shell, uh, and that is to fit the winterization hatch. As you guys know, the Details West parts, they uh, they usually don't fit on these blue box uh, shell like the cast fans, for example. If you guys have done any kind of modification to these things and had to put the fan, um, put a winterization hatch on any of these models, it never really fits right because the, the casting is um, it's a bit thin. You can do certain things to modify the casting, but only to an extent. You still got to kind of modify the fan a little bit to get it to fit right. So, uh, learning from um, how it went last time uh, with this experience, I'm going to also just completely cut the fan off and I'll have the winterization hatch just cover this. I'll also remove this vent here because it's basically going to cover this entire little area here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those parts as well. And when I'll come back, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys that. So if we look at the shell here after cutting, you can see I've removed the fan, uh, chiseled it out. I've also put some putty on the uh, little holes for the vent that are going to be covered up by the winterization hatch. Uh, it's not an award-winning cut-up job, but who gives a crap? I just sanded it down a little bit, um, and I'll clean it up. It'll look a lot better once the hatch is on there. And again, it's going to be mostly covered in snow and snow effects, so even if there is a few little scars and nicks, you won't notice them. Um, looking at the hatch here, I again test fit the hatch. I looked at the photos again and realized the hatch was slightly too... Uh, it wasn't as tall as the prototype. Alaska Rare did a lot of interesting things with hatches, um, and so I had to modify the details west part and make it a little taller with uh, some styrene here. I can't tell you the exact size of styrene, but I basically made a new little square here, and this is going to fit on top like this, and it fits pretty much perfectly onto the model. Uh, so again, you can see how once it's on there, it'll cover all that scar damage up and everything else. So that's the hatch. That's finished. Uh, looking at the chassis, you can see we got the details removed, and I've basically taken some putty and filled those in. It's a rough job, but I'm just going to sand it down and clean it up, and then we can begin the detailing of the fuel tank here. Um, and then looking at the cab, I filled up the hole in the cab itself, um, and then again, you can see that really cool damage. It's actually, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. It looks really, really, really cool. It'll look awesome once it's on the, the model. Um, so anyway, that's uh, starting to come along here.